Consumato mest. Great love story of Dr. Jose Rizal and Josephine Bracken. Jose Rizal was born on June 19, 1861 to a landed family of Chinese ancestry in Calamba, Laguna. Motivated with desire to cure his mother of her eye disease, he studied medicine specializing in ophthalmology in the University of Santo Tomas in Manila in 1882. He went to Spain to further his study of medicine at the Universidad de Central Madrid. There he finished his studies with flying colors. Josephine Bracken, who was born on October 3, 1876 in Hong Kong, was the daughter of a British infantry corporal. Her mother died shortly after her birth so that she was given up for adoption to George Tucker, an American engineer. But shortly thereafter, Mr. Taffer's wife died. He married to a Portuguese woman as his second wife whom he had a daughter. But, but then again, the second wife died in 1891 and he married for the third time. Josephine found that the third Mrs. Taffer difficult to get along with so that he had to run away to the Cosona Sister Coven where she had attended her early studies. She returned to Taffer's house only after he begged her to be with him again. In the Bitan, Rizal was attracted to Josephine and courted her. She was petite and her blue eyes and brown hair indicated her Irish ancestry. She was not a woman of remarkable beauty, but her charm nevertheless captivated him. She also fell for him and the romance between Rizal, who was 34, and Josephine, who was just 18, started. When Tuffers knew of your relationship, he was vehemently furious, and he, and he tried to slash his wrist with a blade. However, Rizal and Josephine were able to stop him. After being calmed down by Rizal, Tuffer listened to the reason and finally accepted the relationship between her and the doctor, although it upset him. Tuffer's eyes condition was beyond treatment. This reason plus his daughter's relationship with Rizal prompted him to go back to Hong Kong. Josephine accompanied her father back to Hong Kong. While in Manila, Josephine brought with her Rizal's letter to his family. She was introduced herself to them. His parents and his siblings However, we're not viewing of her with paper in Manila. Josephine had to stay in the house of Rizal's sister, Narcisa, who was the one closest to her in the Rizal family. After a while, Josephine returned to the Bitan to continue her life with Rizal. In Talisay, the Bitan, Rizal and Josephine's love had grown as days went by so that they decided to cement their relationship in ecclesiastical marriage. But being an excommunicated Catholic, Rizal was advised by Father Obak, the would-be officiating priest, that he should first get the approval of the Bishop of Cebu. However, there was no positive reply of his request from the Bishop. Nevertheless, Rizal and Josephine continued to live as a man and a wife. Living with Rizal, Josephine learned how to sew, cook food, and do the other tasks to help him in their husband routines. She attended to him the octagonal bamboo and nipa house that they occupied as a love nest. In this time, she became pregnant. While we played prank with her, she got startled and she fell to an iron stand. The accident resulted to the premature birth of his son. Resolved deeply saddened with the incident. He named the stillborn child Francisco in the honor of his father and buried it. At the height of the revolution in Cuba, 
Rizal volunteered her services as a doctor to attend the victims of yellow fever. Philippine Spanish Governor General Ramon Blanco, who was sympathetic to his plight, granted his leave to that country. Only July 3, 1896, Rizal and Josephine together with Narcisa left the Pitan and bordered to the Espana for Manila. While in Manila, he was not allowed to disembark from the ship that would take him to the next destination. Josephine, however, allowed to visit him in the ship. In Manila, she stayed in Narcisa's house. The political situation that was brewing meanwhile would somehow affect Rizal's final destiny. Governor General Ramon Blanco, who was sympathetic to Rizal, was disliked by the friars because of his soft and reconciliatory stance toward the Filipino dissidents. Friars led by Archbishop of Manila Bernardo Nozaleda had worked for Blanco's removal to Spain Regent Queen Maria Cristina. They succeeded in their effort and on December 13, 1896, Blanco was replaced by Governor General Camilo Polaveja, who had the hard lines stand against dissidents. The situation did not bode well for Rizal since he had anchored the friars who welded much political cloth, and that the new Governor General had a compromising attitude to those who were considered enemies of the state. On August 1, 1896, the ship that Rizal boarded left to the port of Manila. En route to Spain, there was an order for his arrest in October 6, 1896. He was detained in Barcelona. He was interrogated and was expected of his belongings. There were mansory papers confiscated from his possession, implicated in the rebellion through his association with the Katipunan, Rizal was sent back to the Manila to face the trial. Rizal faced a five-day preliminary investigation on November 26, 1896. Two days before his replacement as Governor General on December 13, 1896, Blanco endorsed Rizal's case to Polaveja who decided that it would be finally settled by a court-martial. On December 26, 1896, Rizal faced a court-martial in the building Cuartal de España in Fort Santiago. Despite the dedication of self-effort of Defense Council, Lieutenant Luis Taviel de Andrante to present convincing refutation on charges against Rizal. The court found that the accused guilty of all the charges, and Rizal was sentenced to die by firing squad. A day before his execution, Rizal gave a stove to his sister Trinidad and whispered to her that there was something in it. He also summoned Josephine and the two had their last time together. It was also reported that two or one hour before the execution, he and Josephine Bracken were married in a Catholic ceremony officiated by Father Vicente. Balagar. The cooking stove given by Rizal to Trinidad was later found out to contain a piece of paper with a poem entitled Mi Ultimo Adios or My Last Farewell. On the last line of the poem were the words Farewell my sweet stranger, my darling, my delight. That line is to be believed to be dedicated to Josephine Brackett. On December 30, 1896, Rizal was escorted by the guards to the execution site in Bagumbayan. The Filipino squad backed up by the Spanish squad behind it had to do the shooting. Before the shots, a military doctor checks Rizal's pulse and was amazed to find it to be normal. At about 7 a.m., an order to fire accompanied with beats of drums was then given to the executioners. As he fell to the ground, Rizal uttered his last word, consumatumis or it is complicated. He also mustered his last remaining strength to turn his body around so that he would die facing the sky. Rizal was only 35 years old when he died. On that day, a martyr shed his blood on his country's soil. It was a blood that would later nurture the seed of his countrymen's aspirations for an independent country and a better tomorrow. In his Noli Mitangire, Rizal wrote, foretelling the word said, 
by the dying Elias to the child Basilio, who are the two of his characters in the novel. I shall die without the dawn breaking upon my homeland. You shall see it, salute it. Do not forget those who have fallen before the night. Jose Rizal was later buried in an unmarkable grave and cemetery in Paco, Manila. After the death of Rizal, Josephine joined the revolutionaries. She was reported to have witnessed the Tejeros Convention. For her activities, she was summoned by Governor General Tolabija, who ordered to her to leave the Philippines. But she being the daughter of an American citizen, could not be forcibly deported from the country. But after receiving advices from the American consul, she voluntarily left for the Hong Kong to join her father who died shortly after their reunion. In Hong Kong, Josephine met Vicente Abad, a Filipino Spanish mestizo. He married her on December 15, 1898. They later went to Cebu where he set up a bicycle store while she spent her square time tutoring English. On April 17, 1900, she gave birth to a daughter which the couple named Dolores. After a few years, Josephine returned to Hong Kong where she died of tuberculosis on March 15, 1902. She was only 25 years old. <laughs>